In this movie, we're going to delve deeper into filtering and a little more grouping. Picking up where we left off with our second report, our report that's pointing to the revenue transaction and office tables, go ahead and click Next. From the previous lessons, you should recognize this is where you choose your fields. Now you can either highlight the fields and drag them over to the Fields to Display window or double click them as you go along. In this case, we're going to need Office Num, Office Name, and Division. From the Revenue Transaction table, go ahead and choose ID, Revenue Amount, Site, and Revenue Date. Go ahead and click Next. This is our Group By section where we determine our basic groups. In this case, we're going to need two. We're going to need Division and Office Name. Now in this case, hierarchy is very important. If you know that the offices roll up into Division, Division makes a better Uber group, if you will, whereas grouping by Office Name first, then by Division, wouldn't make too much sense. Go ahead and click Next. The summary is Krista will automatically insert for you where it finds a number, but we're going to delve into that a little bit later. Go ahead and click Next. The group sorting again can be done from the report itself. Go ahead and click Next. We're not going to add a chart today, so continue to hit Next. This is where the lesson really takes place. This is our filter section. This is what filters and or limits the amount of data we actually pull back and what we're going to see. For example, go ahead and either double click on Division or drag and drop it into the Filter Fields window and then highlight it. Notice this drop down box here it says is any value. This is the default value when you're filtering. It's the same as not pulling it over meaning there's no filter whatsoever. However, here are your filter options with virtually every field you have. You have is any value, is equal to, is not equal to, is one of, is not one of. In this case, we're going to choose is one of. Now, some of these options were essentially designed for numbers and don't work so good with, let's say, text fields such as the division field we're dealing with. In that case, let's go ahead and choose is one of. Now, I like to issue a word of caution when filtering. Filtering is very important, but you have to be very careful what you filter on. Once you choose is one of, which is a very handy filter tool, you're going to get this drop down box. Now this is where the warning comes in. If you're using this drop down box, which is going to go out and query that exact field from your database, you have to be careful. If you have hundreds of thousands of choices, you're going to have a very large list and it's going to take a while to get back to you and load on your local PC. So when you click this down button, if you have a large list, it takes much longer. If you have a short list, it's good to go. Now you don't even have to use the drop down box at all. You can type in whatever you want. As long as of course it matches a value that's already populated in that tables field. In this case, now let's say if I decide to fast finger it and say Western as opposed to West. It doesn't really matter because Western isn't a choice in that field. But it also brings up a good point. If you're going to type it in, make sure you have better spelling skills than I do. If you found you make a mistake, it's easy. Simply highlight the one that you wish to change and either add or remove. In this case, we're going to hit remove. Now go ahead and click on office name. Now you can have multiple filters, which is the point. But again, you have to be careful. The filter fields are kind of true statements. By default, they say that if I choose east and west divisions, it's not going to stop me. Let's say, go ahead and choose is one of. If I choose a location outside of east and west, it's going to look at all the filters and assume that they're all true. So if I choose Tokyo, and I go back to my divisions, and Tokyo is not in east or west, then my report will return nothing. However, if I choose something that is in there, let's say Southern California, Southern California is located in the west, and it's on my list here. So I may not get Tokyo, I will get Southern California. I think this is easier to illustrate, so let's go ahead and click Finish and look at our results. Notice how it didn't pull anything back. That's because the conditions of our filters were not all true. The record set it was trying to pull back could not meet every condition we set forth. Let me illustrate. Take your mouse and click on the Select Expert icon. That's the hand above choosing the marbles. And click on it. From here we can see our office divisions have to define east and west. And they must be in Southern California and Tokyo. 
Go ahead and click on the show formula. This is what it looks like roughly in SQL. It means all of these conditions must be true. The division must be in east or west and the name has to be in Southern California and Tokyo. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. However, go ahead and click on the tab that says office name and click on delete and then press OK. When it asks you, go ahead and say refresh data. Anytime you change your filter selection in Crystal, you must refresh the data, otherwise you're using the saved data from before and you get the same result. Now, our filters have been corrected in that it is now showing us everything that we've chosen to see in East and West Divisions. Also notice this handy guide over here that tells us what our groups are. In the next lesson, we're going to delve deeper into the grouping functions that Crystal offers.